Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Around the world, tens of millions of people are living with it today, and that number is expected to more than double in the coming decades. Clinically, it shows up as a progressive decline in memory, thinking, and the ability to plan and carry out everyday tasks. Families notice repeating questions, misplaced items, confusion about time or place, trouble finding words, personality changes. People think Alzheimer's is all about broken neurons and lost memories. I'm Dr. Angio. If you're worried about keeping your brain sharp as you age, hit subscribe, because today we're going to look at Alzheimer's through a completely different lens. Your blood vessels. For a long time, the dominant story about Alzheimer's was very simple. It was a disease of neurons. Protein fragments build up in the brain, neurons die, and cognition fails. That narrative isn't wrong, but it is incomplete. If we zoom in on the brain under a microscope, we see two classical hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. The first is the accumulation of sticky protein fragments called amyloid beta. These fragments clump together and form amyloid plaques that sit outside neurons. Some forms of amyloid beta, such as a beta-142, are especially prone to aggregate and form these deposits. The second hallmark lies inside the neurons themselves. Healthy neurons rely on a protein called tau to stabilize internal tracts called microtubules, which act like railways carrying nutrients and signaling molecules along the length of the cell. In Alzheimer's disease, tau becomes chemically altered through a process called hyperphosphorylation. One example is a form called P-tau-231. These extra phosphate groups change tau's shape and behavior. Instead of supporting the microtubule tracts, tau detaches, starts to stick to itself, and gradually twists into fibers known as neurofibrillary tangles. As more and more tangles accumulate inside the neuron, they clog the internal transport system, disrupt electrical signaling, and push the cell toward dysfunction and death. So, in very simple terms, Amyloid plaques form outside neurons, and tau tangles cause neurons to collapse from the inside. For decades, the standard model was deregulated proteins like amyloid and tau accumulate, neurons die, and memory fails. But this left important questions unanswered. Why do plaques start in particular brain regions? Why do some people with substantial plaque burden remain cognitively intact? And why do vascular risk factors like hypertension and diabetes so strongly increase the risk of late-life dementia? To answer those questions, researchers began to look beyond neurons and toward the brain's blood supply. Although we tend to think of the brain as a network of nerve cells, it is also one of the most vascular organs in the body. The brain makes up about 2% of our body weight, yet it consumes roughly 20% of our oxygen and glucose. To support this enormous energy demand, it relies on an incredibly dense and finely regulated microvascular network. Every neuron sits within microns of a capillary, so that oxygen and nutrients can be delivered efficiently, moment by moment, as activity changes. These blood vessels are not passive pipes, they are active partners in brain function. They help regulate blood flow, clear metabolic waste, and maintain the integrity of a protective interface known as the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is built from a specialized neurovascular unit. At its core are endothelial cells, the same cells that line blood vessels throughout the body. But in the brain, they are tightly sealed together by junctions that are far more restrictive than in most other tissues. These tight junctions prevent unwanted substances from slipping between cells into the brain. Instead, transport is carefully regulated by a series of specific carrier proteins. Wrapped around these endothelial cells are parasites embedded in a shared basement membrane. You can think of parasites as structural engineers and regulators combined. They help stabilize vessel walls, modulate blood flow at the capillary level, and signal to endothelial cells to keep the barrier intact. Surrounding the vessel from the outside are astrocyte end feet, extensions of support cells that almost completely cover the surface of the capillaries. Astrocytes communicate with neurons and blood vessels at the same time, matching local blood flow to local neural activity and contributing to barrier maintenance. All of this sits within a scaffold of extracellular matrix that provides mechanical support and transmits biochemical signals. Together, endothelial cells, parasites, astrocytes, and the surrounding matrix form the neurovascular unit. 
When this system is intact, it allows oxygen and nutrients into the brain, clears waste products out, and keeps toxins, pathogens, and inflammatory cells where they belong. Outside the brain tissue, angiogenesis, the growth and remodeling of these vessels, continues at a low level in the adult brain. It is tightly regulated. The brain does not tolerate uncontrolled vessel growth. In a healthy state, angiogenic signals such as VEGF, angiopoietins, and nitric oxide help maintain capillary density, repair minor damage, and adapt blood flow to metabolic demands. VEGF binds to receptors on endothelial cells, stimulating them to sprout and form new vessel segments, while other signals ensure parasites are recruited so that the new vessels are stable and non-leaky. When this balance is maintained, angiogenesis supports brain health. The paradigm shift came when scientists began to notice that this vascular system looked very different in Alzheimer's disease. Instead of normal, quiet microvessels, they saw signs of abnormal angiogenesis and vascular dysfunction. Markers of angiogenic activity, such as VEGF and certain endothelial proteins, were elevated. Microvessels appeared fragmented, twisted, and structurally abnormal. And crucially, the blood-brain barrier was often compromised. In Alzheimer's brains, proteins that should remain in the bloodstream, like fibrinogen and albumin, were found leaking into brain tissue. Parasites, which normally help maintain barrier integrity and regulate capillary flow, showed signs of degeneration. The barrier that once tightly regulated what could enter the brain had become porous. These abnormal vessels were frequently found near amyloid plaques. We also know that amyloid can deposit in the walls of small arteries and capillaries, a condition called cerebral amyloid angiopathy. In many people with Alzheimer's, amyloid doesn't just surround neurons, it infiltrates blood vessel walls themselves. All of this led to a provocative idea. Perhaps plaques do not simply damage blood vessels, perhaps damaged blood vessels help create plaques. Under normal conditions, amyloid beta is continuously produced and continuously cleared. One major route for clearance runs along the basement membranes of blood vessel walls. Soluble amyloid beta is transported along these channels in a process called intramural periarterial drainage. In parallel, the brain uses a fluid-based clearance route, sometimes referred to as the glymphatic system, in which cerebrospinal fluid flows along perivascular spaces, washes through brain tissue, and carries waste products away. Healthy endothelial cells also help shuttle amyloid out of the brain using transporters such as LRP1, which move amyloid from the brain side of the barrier out into the circulation. When blood vessels are intact, these combined pathways function like an efficient plumbing system. In Alzheimer's disease, this system begins to fail. Parasite loss and thickening of the basement membrane physically impede drainage pathways. Endothelial dysfunction reduces the expression of transporters that normally clear amyloid, such as LRP1, and may increase the activity of other receptors, like RAGE, that can bring amyloid and other harmful molecules into the brain. As clearance slows, amyloid accumulates in the tissue around vessels and within vessel walls. Deposits stiffen the vessels, reduce their ability to regulate blood flow, and further disrupt normal signaling. Leaky vessels do not just alter amyloid dynamics, they also allow plasma proteins and inflammatory mediators to enter the brain. When fibrinogen and other blood components cross the damaged barrier, they activate microglia, the brain's resident immune cells. Microglia are not inherently harmful, they are essential for normal maintenance and defense, but chronic, unresolving activation turns them into a source of ongoing inflammation. Activated microglia release reactive oxygen species, pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha and interleukin-1-beta, and enzymes such as matrix metalloproteinases that can further damage the barrier and surrounding tissue. This inflammatory environment injures synapses, disrupts neuronal signaling, and accelerates tau pathology. At the same time, impaired blood flow reduces the delivery of oxygen and glucose to neurons. Studies of cerebral perfusion show that blood flow can be reduced in key brain regions even before significant cognitive symptoms appear. Endothelial dysfunction, increased levels of vasoconstrictors like endothelin-1, and structural vessel changes contribute to chronic hypoperfusion, a state of persistent undersupply. Neurons are thus hit from both sides. They face toxic exposure due to a leaky barrier and energy deprivation due to poor circulation. 
In this light, Alzheimer's disease begins to look like a failure of the neurovascular unit as much as a failure of neurons themselves. Abnormal angiogenesis, leaky capillaries, and barrier breakdown reshape the brain's environment in ways that favor amyloid deposition, tau pathology, inflammation, and cell death. This vascular lens also helps make sense of something clinicians have observed for years, the strong link between midlife vascular risk factors and late-life dementia. Hypertension damages small vessels, promotes stiffening and thickening of the vascular wall, and increases barrier permeability. Diabetes exposes endothelial cells to chronic metabolic stress and advanced glycation end products, which can activate receptors like RAGE and further impair barrier integrity and amyloid clearance. Atherosclerosis reduces blood flow and introduces chronic low-grade inflammation into the vascular system. Long before memory symptoms appear, these conditions may be quietly priming the brain. The vessels that feed and protect neurons gradually lose their flexibility, lose their barrier function, and lose their ability to clear waste. By the time plaques and tangles are easily detectable, the vascular system may have been struggling for years or even decades. From this perspective, Alzheimer's is not a sudden isolated event. It is the end result of a long interaction between neurons and their blood supply. So, what does this mean for us? First, it reframes Alzheimer's disease as not only a neuronal disorder, but also a vascular disorder. Protecting the brain may require us to protect the vessels that feed it. Endothelial health, balanced angiogenesis, and blood-brain barrier integrity are not abstract research concepts. They are central to how resilient our brains can be in the face of aging and disease. Second, it highlights why managing vascular risk factors is so important. Conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, and other forms of vascular disease do not just affect the heart, they affect the brain's microvessels and the neurovascular unit. There is growing evidence that a substantial proportion of dementia cases may be attributable to modifiable vascular risks. That suggests there is a meaningful window of opportunity in midlife to alter the trajectory of brain aging by supporting vascular health. Third, it opens new therapeutic avenues. If pathological angiogenesis and barrier breakdown play critical roles in Alzheimer's, then strategies aimed at stabilizing microvessels, supporting parasite function, restoring normal endothelial signaling, and improving perivascular clearance may complement approaches that directly target amyloid or tau. The goal is not to shut down angiogenesis, but to return it to a balanced physiologic state that supports neurons rather than harms them. Finally, it gives us a more integrated way to think about the brain. Neurons do not exist in isolation. They are embedded in a rich environment of vessels, glial cells, and extracellular matrix. The neurovascular unit is a single functional system. When that system is intact, the brain can adapt, compensate, and remain resilient even in the presence of some pathology. When it fails, vulnerability increases. But here's the part that often gets overlooked. While vascular dysfunction can set the stage for Alzheimer's, there is also powerful evidence that lifestyle choices, particularly nutrition and daily habits, can meaningfully shape your brain's trajectory. And thankfully, there are many strategies you can take to minimize your risk. One of the most important targets is chronic inflammation. Foods rich in antioxidants and bioactive compounds can help dampen inflammatory signals that damage blood vessels and accelerate cognitive decline. In a large nutrition-based research study involving more than 90,000 participants, people who maintained a healthy diet had a 4 to 9% lower risk of developing Alzheimer's and other dementias. But what's even more encouraging is this. Even if your diet hasn't been ideal, it's not too late to change. The very same study showed that improving dietary quality over a 10-year period led to an 11 to 25% reduction in dementia risk, especially in adults younger than 60. Your vessels respond to what you feed them, and your brain does too. So, what foods, specifically, support a brain that ages gracefully? Coffee and tea are among the simplest additions. Coffee is one of the richest sources of antioxidants in the Western diet, and moderate consumption is around two to three cups of caffeinated, unsweetened coffee per day. Has been associated with a 25 to 50% reduction in dementia risk. Tea offers its own benefits. Green tea, in particular, contains catechins that help protect brain cells from oxidative damage. 
A UK biobank study found that drinking two to three cups of tea daily was linked to a 16 to 19 percent lower risk of Alzheimer's and up to a 29 percent lower risk of vascular dementia. Berries, especially blueberries and strawberries, are another powerful tool. Their deep colors come from anthocyanins, which are compounds that appear to protect memory and cognitive function. The Mind Diet specifically recommends berries because of this unique effect. In fact, brain tissue from a memory and aging study showed that people who consumed more anthocyanins had fewer amyloid plaques and reduced tau pathology. And in patients already experiencing cognitive decline, regular blueberry intake led to measurable improvements in episodic and language memory. Fermented foods like yogurt, kefir, and sauerkraut support gut health, which scientists now recognize as deeply connected to brain health through the gut-brain axis. A more balanced gut microbiome may help regulate inflammation, support vascular health, and reinforce the blood-brain barrier. Olive oil, particularly extra virgin olive oil, is another cornerstone of brain-protective diets. It contains more than 30 phenolic compounds with strong antioxidant properties. In Mediterranean cultures, olive oil is used liberally, and research shows that consuming just half a tablespoon or more per day is associated with a 28% reduction in dementia-related death risk compared to little or no consumption. Dark leafy greens such as spinach and kale offer some of the densest nutrition found in any foods. They deliver vitamins, minerals, folate and plant compounds that directly support neuronal and vascular health. In one remarkable study, people who consumed roughly one serving of dark leafy greens each day had cognitive abilities comparable to individuals 11 years younger. These aren't subtle changes, they're biologically meaningful. And finally, exercise may be one of the most powerful interventions available. Moderate physical activity that can be just 30 minutes a day, five days per week, has been associated with a 28% reduction in Alzheimer's disease risk. This protective effect is especially strong for people who maintain activity into midlife and beyond. When vascular resilience becomes increasingly important, Exercise improves blood flow, enhances neurovascular coupling, and supports angiogenesis in a healthy, regulated way that nourishes the brain. All of these choices like food, movement, inflammation control, and support the same system, your blood vessels. And when your vessels stay healthy, your brain has the environment it needs to resist degeneration. Alzheimer's disease, viewed through this lens, is not just a story of plaques and tangles, it is a story of what happens when the intricate partnership between blood vessels and neurons breaks down. I'm Dr. Angio. If you want to continue learning how your blood vessels shape your risk for diseases like Alzheimer's and how protecting vascular health may help protect the brain, make sure you're subscribed and following along. There is much more to discover about the hidden vascular systems inside your body, and I'm looking forward to exploring them with you. Thanks for watching.